What's going on YouTube? Bryce Builds It All, your favorite AMPIA and part 147 instructor. And today I'm doing an annual inspection on this Rocket Mooney with assistance from the owner. And when he gets here, I'm going to ask him some questions. And we're going to talk about is the Rocket Mooney the best Mooney you can buy? More specifically, is the Rocket Mooney better than a Bravo or are they sort of in the same category? So stick around. Now there will be plenty of drawbacks to having a Rocket Mooney, one of which being, as you can tell, there is not a lot of room inside the cowling, which makes it a little bit more difficult to work on than your standard Mooney. Being an aircraft mechanic, many people don't like Moonies. I do, I think they're not that bad. I think they're actually pretty easy to work on. They're just a little tight in places. So anyways, he's on the way now. He'll probably be here in about 10 or 15 minutes. So while I'm waiting on him, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and get the cowling off, disconnected, all that good stuff. And then we will start our conversation. As promised, the owner is here. This is Lyle. Lyle and I go way back. He actually used to be a student at a flight school that I worked at years and years and years ago. Um, then he went on and had his own illustrious career, but he is the ro owner of this Mooney rocket. So Lyle, tell us a little bit about yourself. All right, so my name's Lyle, uh, and of course, uh, Bryce failed to mention that he was my instructor in the first year, the airframe portion of uh, AMP program that he works uh, for over here in San Antonio. Anyway, but this is uh, a Mooney rocket. It's a 305 rocket. Uh, it was actually an STC conversion done by Rocket Engineering up in Spokane, Washington. Uh, what they did is they took a, a, a M20K uh, 252, actually there were some 233s that they converted. They took the 210 horsepower IO360 out of it, which was 210 horsepower, and then they somehow managed to cram a 305 horsepower TSIO 520NB engine in the cowling. They had to make some cowling modifications on the other side. They also added a NACA scoop and there's a lot of other things. They beefed up the landing gear and several things of that nature because it is a very, very nose heavy airplane. You got to learn to fly with uh, almost full nose up trim on landing, which uh, kind of freaks a little people, you know, some people out. Uh, but it's a very interesting plane. Uh, it handles really well. It handles like the Mooney uh, did, uh, you know, originally. And uh, the interesting part is, I mean, this thing can easily make 215 to 225 knots uh, you can get about 220 true uh, all the way in, you know, in the flight levels. You can get about 16, 1700 feet of uh, climb per minute, which is just phenomenal. I mean, it climbs towards the clouds like a homesick angel. It really does. And it is just a super, super plane. It's not the long body, which is where the Bravos started. So uh, he want, Bryce wanted me to explain a little bit about the Bravos. So the Bravos are really, 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 really nice planes. They were made later. This is a 1986 model that was converted in 1993, uh, if I recall correctly. And the Bravo uh, obviously came with the larger engine. I think it's TIO. Is it TIO? TIO 540. 540. Something. It's a Lycoming. It's a Lycoming. It's a big difference. These are Continentals. Right. And, and the Bravos are Lycoming. And so there was there was a, a an intermediary model called the TLS Bravo, which had a Tycoming. Uh, I'm sorry, what, what did TLS stand for? I, I don't remember. Something uh, Teledyne Cotton. No, no, it was something Lycoming Saber. Anyway, the problem with that is it had a different engine than the TIO 540. Uh, it had a different variant, and the oil galleys. There were oil galleys that were installed later that cooled the cylinders because these TLS Bravos were burning through a lot of cylinders and that was a problem because they were going like I've only got 600 hours on this engine and I'm yeah. having to already do a top overhaul and so uh, they figured out what was wrong and it was the CHTs were just getting too hot and so in the next variant which they then called the Bravo if I've got my story straight uh, they included some oil galleys that provided some oil cooling of those cylinder heads and they didn't get as hot and they, uh, they were uh, you know, as, as fast as the rocket or any of those other variants. Now the problem that, you know, if you want to discuss the difference in a rocket and a Bravo, this is like we said, has a Continental 6 in it, uh, the TSO uh, 520 NB, and I can go to Continental, assuming I could get one uh, built, you know, they're about 60 brand new out of the factory, about 65. 65. 
yeah. about sixty-five thousand dollars before shipping. Before shipping, uh, right out of the uh, the the factory. So you know, a brand new, never run, zero time engine, about sixty-five thousand dollars. Now, if I'm not mistaken, if you try to overhaul the TIO five forty variant that's in the Bravo, because of those oil galleys and a couple of other specialty uh, mods that they made to keep that engine cooler. I think an overhaul will run you about 85 and that's an overhaul so you can overhaul it once and then you might need a new one and so i don't know what a new bravo a new tio costs but i bet you it's probably just south of a hundred hundred thousand dollars so there's the operational cost difference uh on takeoff uh in the rocket i'm burning about 33 gallons an hour uh and then you know once we clear the ground and clear the obstacles we can back that off to about 30 inches of manifold pressure and continue to climb at you know, 11, 12, 1300 feet a minute. And the Bravo has very similar uh, capabilities. But uh, as, as far as uh, cost, the, the Bravos on the used market, I believe them to be fairly substantially more expensive. Uh, I think if you look out on controller, any Bravo that you see is gonna be about 240,000. Uh, and I think you can find uh, rockets, the uh, uh, you can find a not, nice rocket anywhere from 175 to 225. So they're a little cheaper on the initial buy. They're cheaper on the uh, the engine overhaul versus a, a new engine. And uh, so there's a, there's a lot of benefits to the rocket over the Bravo. But you know if you want a newer airframe and things like that, you know that hadn't got a lot of the STCs uh, that this thing has. That you know you have to monitor those as well. Uh, for compliance and uh, you, those are just some of the issues that you'll see between the rockets and the Bravos. Anything else? No, very well, very well. I think that uh, I think that answers a lot of people's questions. Was there a particular reason why you chose to go with this rocket other than it's just what was available at the time or was there a driving, what drove, your, drove you and your decision to this aircraft? Well, Without belaboring the point, I think budget is certainly part of it. Uh, I didn't have $240,000 for the Bravos that I was, I was seeing out there. Like I said, they're newer. Uh, oftentimes after 2007, if you find a 2007 Bravo, they'll have the G1000 or some variant in there. And so those are north of $300,000. I just didn't have that and I didn't want to finance it. So uh, this was in the ballpark for me. It gave me the speed that I needed. I live in the Phoenix area now. I made it to San Antonio in about three hours and 42 minutes and about 217 knots over the ground. Uh, I think that was about 195 true. Uh, so I made it here in uh, just under four hours, which is phenomenal considering it's about a 16 hour drive. Uh, so it cut that time in half. Now here's the cool thing. Uh, when you're in level flight and you're, you're cruising at about 65%, the neat thing about this is you can have it leaned out and be down to about 16 and a half gallons an hour, which is not terrible. For 217 knots, if you divide that in half, you're at what? About the speed of a 172, which burns about eight per hour. So all you've done is, yeah, you, you're burning more gas, but you're going twice as fast and twice as far. So, uh, you know, that's, that's something that really drew me to this is the fact that the Cessna you know, you can go 107 or you can go 215, you decide, you know, burns but the burns the same amount of gas. So it's a solid airplane. I mean, it flies like a dream. It takes very little to control. Uh, you gotta be sure, uh, the one thing that you have to know about all Moonies is you absolutely have to fly it by the numbers in the POH. There's no getting around it. You land faster than 75, you're gonna float down the field for about a hundred feet uh, 100 yards for every knot over 75 that you're going and if you're slow you're going to feel like you're slow and you may actually bounce and so the bouncing is bad because you don't want to you know break the the beefy nose gear uh, or have it fold up on you or get into a pilot induced oscillation so but it's a great airplane uh, i love my plane uh, i'm so thrilled that i was able to work with bruce these last couple uh, bruce, bryce uh these, <laughs> these uh last couple days and get this annual done. It's in fantastic shape. Uh, he fixed a lot of the issues. We did. Uh, we fixed a mixture issue where I wasn't able to advance the mixture to full rich uh, for landing, and we fixed that. We fixed the idle. Uh, we fixed uh, the com issue. Com issue. We fixed a lot of things. Yeah. So, uh, super solid annual. Uh, I'm superiorly pleased with how it's turned out, and I feel much more comfortable 
now that I'm not having to do workarounds to uh, get in the air and get someplace. There you go. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the little uh, talk about Moonies and Rockets and Bravos and all that other stuff. Don't get me wrong, Bravos are great airplanes, uh, but uh, you know, don't for, overlook a rocket. For don't one. overlook a rocket, uh, you know, depending on what your budget is. So there you go, everybody. What you are not seeing behind the scenes is that for about three days, me and Lyle have been getting absolutely shixed by this airplane <laughs> trying to get work done, and we are absolutely smoked. smoked. So we are both going to go take a really nice hot shower. We've got a dinner tonight with some, some friends, and then he's heading out of town tomorrow. We will see you all in the next video, which is, again, on this airplane. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave us a like, leave us a comment, leave Lyle a quiet round of applause behind your computer screen. We will see you in the next one. Go build something and be easy. Bye safe. <laughs>